So let's play with some more slightly interesting graphs now. What about the graph of 1 minus e to the x? What is that going to look like? Well, we've got a couple of things going on here. So let's just rewrite the equation of this line by um, reordering the terms, because that might help us see more easily what we're playing with. What we're dealing with here is negative e to the x plus 1. So let's think about our basic e to the x graph. And let's think how we turn that into this graph. So let's have a look. There's my e to the x. And what's the first thing I've done to that e to the x graph? I've made it negative, as it were. If it's positive, I make it negative. If it's negative, I make it positive. So basically, all the y coordinates of this original graph are now going to get switched to be their negative. So it was going through 0, 1. And this graph is now going to go through 0, minus 1. The asymptote isn't going to change, it's never going to touch the x-axis. And so now we're dealing with the negative e to the x graph. And now the next thing we need to do is to take this graph and add 1 to everything. So let's take this point. It was at 0, minus 1. It's now going to go through 0, 0. This um, curve here would have eventually gone towards 0, as x tends towards negative infinity. So the asymptote that was on the x-axis, that's also going to be shifted up 1. So we're now going to have the asymptote up here where y equals 1. So our final graph, having transformed everything, is going to be this. y equals negative e to the x plus 1. So we've taken our e to the x graph. We've made it negative, so we've reflected it in the x-axis. We've then added 1 to everything, which means we've translated all the coordinates 1 up. And just to show the examiner we really know the business, we're going to um, draw a dashed line for the asymptote of y equals 1. And then we've already shown that it's going to the origin. So there's that graph. Now, we haven't done any sketches yet of the ln graph. So here we've got the graph ln of x plus 2 in the brackets. So let's start off with our basic graph, our basic ln x graph, which looks like so. Go through the point 1, 0, and now we need to think about what we've done. Now we can actually see some brackets here, so if we use that sort of helpful hint, which is if it's inside the brackets, we're just changing the x coordinates, and it sort of does the opposite of what you think. So we've got a plus 2 in there, so that actually means we're going to shift all of our x coordinates two places to the left. So again, whereas before was the ln graph, we had an asymptote on the y-axis, or x equals 0, we're now going to shift everything two places to the left. So this asymptote is now going to be x equals minus 2. And then we're going to take this point, shift it 2 to the left. It's going to be at minus 1, 0. And the graph is going to maintain the same shape so it's going to come up, through, and along. Now the final thing we need to put to make this a nice sketch, if we come back to our handy sort of checklist of things, are we changing the x and the y coordinates? In this case we're kind of shifting it around in the x direction. Are there any asymptotes and are they moving? Yes, we've talked about that. We've talked about as it tends towards infinity and negative infinity. What about where it crosses the x-axis and the y-axis? So, what equation do we need to solve here? to find out the value of the y coordinate, well we know that at this point x is 0. And we're trying to find the y coordinate. So let's just have a go down here. y equals ln of in this case 0 plus 2. So the y coordinate is going to be ln 2. And I don't have a calculator on me. I don't necessarily need to evaluate that to a decimal. I can just put that in as 0 ln 2. So that is your graph of ln of x plus 2. It's a translation two to the left in the x direction. That's one known graph. What about transforming this one? Aha, your friend of mine, Lunex, but with a mod. We're going to mod Lunex. So let's start off with our basic Lunex graph. Let's put in the key coordinate here of 1, 0, and let's think about what we're doing. Let's think about function machines. We're starting off with x. We're then going to ln it, so we're going to get ln x out. And now it's saying 
mod it. And let's remind ourselves, what does mod mean? If it's negative, make it positive. If it's positive, don't change it. So what bits are actually going to change here? Is this bit going to change? No, because the values of Linux here are all positive. It's only these bits here which are going to change. And so effectively, we're going to reflect these bits in the x-axis. We're going to bounce it back up like so. So the graph of y equals mod of Linux is that graph. And so there is your graph of y equals mod Linux. And finally, but not by no means leastly, what about the graph of e to the power of mod x? So let's have a think. It's an e to the x graph. Let's start off with our standard e to the x graph. OK. Now, what does mod tell us? It says if it's negative, make it positive. So if we just look at this part of the graph, where the x-coordinates are already positive, is this part of the graph going to change at all? No, because it's already positive, so mod has no impact. What about this part of the graph, where x is negative? That is going to make a difference. Because if we take this point here, say this is the point where x is negative 1, the value here is going to be e to the negative 1 normally, but now they're saying don't give me e to the negative 1, just give me e to the 1, i.e., give me the value you would have had over here where x was plus 1. So in essence, what modding here does is it basically means we're going to do a reflection in the y-axis just of this positive bit. We're going to bounce it off here in effect. Not very good uh, reflection going on there, but basically that is going to be the graph of y equals e to the power of mod x. And that, ladies and gents, is how we can practice our graph transformations on graphs from the exponential function and the natural logarithmic function.